Okay, so I think when it, when it comes to sports analytics, a major concern always is that the um, analyst or the referee might be biased towards one side. I can promise you that I'm totally neutral because I'm an Oakland Raiders fan and don't care too much about uh, the Patriots or the Atlanta Falcons. Yes? Okay, maybe I, I should try it with the microphone again. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. Let's try that. Better now? Okay, perfect. So, who of you did see the Super Bowl this year? Okay. So, so to be honest, I, I skipped it this year since my team was not involved. And, but I, I think it would be interesting to find out what happened during the Super Bowl and Open data is always good for that. Um, what I did, I used tweets, roughly five million tweets, I think from one day before the Super Bowl to one day after the Super Bowl. And I think Twitter is a, is a great data source because it, it can be seen as a playground. We have some geographic information, even though it's very sparsely populated. We have the timestamps, so for instance, we can see and when America wakes up, when the game starts, and when all the bus happens. Also, we can see who communicates to who, so we can do some network analysis. And most importantly, we can do text analytics. So when we do text analytics, we could start very simple. For instance, just counting words. So, if you take those four and a half million tweets, we see the term Super Bowl arises. We see Lady Gaga, for instance, we see Tom Brady, but we don't really get a meaning what was behind that. We can extend on that and only take terms that are persons. And we see Tom Brady is arri uh, arriving, we have Julian Edelman, we have Matt Ryan, so all the involved players. We have some other interesting people, for instance, find Michael, Michael Jackson, Snoop Dogg, Harry Potter. All, all persons that are involved here, but still we don't really get the meaning of what happened. So what we need is, we need some algorithm that allows us to find some meaningful combination of terms. And I think that one might be a good example of what the topic could be. We see Tom Brady, we see he was the MVP, we see his jersey, and we see that the jersey was missing. So we might get an idea of what a story um, happened at the Super Bowl. So, how do, we, how do we get there? Quick introduction on text mining. So these are two very simple tweets. One is Tom Brady focused on winning Super Bowl, not questions about President Trump. And the other one, what Lady Gaga should wear for the Super Bowl halftime show. So when we do text mining, we start by parsing the text. That is basically, we divide the text in tokens. And provide every term or token with a role. So for instance, we see Tom Brady is the term, and Tom Brady is a person. We see that the president is a title, and Trump is a person. We see cryptic internet addresses. And we see part of speech, such, a, such as verbs or, or nouns. So, next step, we get rid of all ir 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 irrelevant information in the text, so we can filter. For instance, if a word doesn't occur too often, we can filter it out. We could also filter for different um, parts of speech, so we only use verbs or nouns for the analysis, or we can say we only want to use persons, for instance, and get rid of locations, for instance. So our matrix gets a bit smaller. So, but still, our matrix is really sparsely populated. What does it mean? We have roughly 5 million tweets, and we might have a couple of 10,000 terms. And as we see, the terms do not arise in too many documents. So we have a lot of zeros or missing values, depending on how we structure the data. So how can we do analysis on that? There is no real magic involved, but linear algebra. So just one simple formula here. So 
this is this is our term by document matrix. Again, it's really high dimensional. There's a technique called singular value decomposition where we can approximate this high dimensional matrix in a lower dimensional space. For instance, we can say we want to consider three dimensions. So we have two matrices of interest. One is the matrix U that is relevant for the terms and one is the matrix V that is relevant for the documents. And these matrices have, have some very nice properties. They are orthogonal, so we can represent them in a coordinate system. So, what we see now, one dimension of this three-dimensional matrix is this axis here. And we see some terms, Lady Gaga, show, show half time, show glitter. So, they seem to align pretty well and they seem to have a meaning. So we could say this should be the Lady Gaga halftime show axis. This is one topic. Let's consider the next one. We have comeback, we have New England Patriots, we have history, we have great, we have Patriots. Again, seems to make some sense. We can interpret that. And we could say, this is the Patriots comeback axis here in this dimension. Next one. Tom Brady, missing jersey, could be another topic here. Seems to make sense. What we see here is Tom Brady has a relatively high weight in two dimensions. One in his Tom Brady axis, but also he's, of course, related to the comeback of the, of the century. So he's re um, also relevant for that topic. So how does this relate to the documents now? Let's take a sample text. That's the one we saw before. So we see here that two terms arise in here that are relevant for the Lady Gaga dimension. Let's take another one. Texas Rangers joint search for Tom Brady's missing Super Bowl jersey. So what we have, we have the term missing, we have the term jersey, and we have Tom Brady in here. So that's seems to align pretty well with one of the dimensions we have here. Next one, New England Patriots comeback history. That aligns pretty well with the third dimensions we, we have. Of course, there can also be documents that align relatively good with two dimensions. So here's one document, Tom Brady leads Patriots to historic comeback. So that has a relatively high weight in two of the dimensions. <laughs> and of course, there can be documents that don't align with any of the dimensions, so we would say they don't have any topic in, inside of them. So, what can we do now? We can project the documents using the weights we have seen and project them in a lower dimension and basically come up with a topic interpretation. Now we don't have the terms, but we have the documents, and we see the tweet pretty aligns pretty good with the Lady Gaga halftime show dimension. So we would say this document is about the halftime show, of course. Those two documents align pretty well with the second dimension, so we, we would say that they are about Tom Brady or his missing jersey. They align well with the third dimension. So they are about to come back. So basically we have three types of document. They can either align well with one dimension, so they are exactly about one topic. We can have documents that align well with many dimensions, two or more dimensions, so they have two topics inside of them. Or we can have outliers that do not align with any of the dimensions. So this is topic identification. This is how it works. We basically approximate a matrix in a lower dimensional space, and then we are able to project documents in that lower dimensional space, and we can provide meaningful interpretation to that. So when we have topics, a document can contain zero, one, or multiple topics. Of course, as we now have a numerical interpretation of these documents, 
we can also cluster these documents. Here we have the Lady Gaga Halftime Show cluster, we have the Tom Brady cluster, we have the Campbell cluster, and we have a cluster that's basically a mix, mixture of these two topics. And if we use an algorithm like dbscan, for instance, we can also find the outliers that don't, that are in neither cluster. So that's the idea. That's the, the theory that is behind um, text mining. So, what were the topics of the Super Bowl? That was the first one. Patriots, comeback, great, overtime. We even see that they won 34 to 28. And we see that it was Tom Brady's fifth Super Bowl title. Second one was about the halftime show, about Lady Gaga. We even see the term drones which I had to read about, but they, she used some drones for the, light, for the lighting for a lifetime show. And we have the third dimension. That was actually about Tom Brady's missing jersey. That uh, was stolen, and apparently the Texas Rangers and the police was involved, but uh, they, got the, they got the jersey back, but, as I found out later. Okay. So these were the three main topics. So we've seen a visualization of that using only a few documents. Of course, we can also visualize all of the documents in three-dimensional space. And as we see here, I think pretty well, we get a similar interpretation. We have the comeback dimension here, green documents, we have the Tom Brady dimension, red documents, Lady Gaga dimension, purple documents, and we have a lot of documents that don't align with any of the dimensions. And of course, we can also animate that to get a better sight from every angle. For instance, we see that the Tom Brady and the Patriots Comeback documents, they are orthogonal, almost orthogonal to the Lady Gaga dimension which makes sense, I think. And as, as previously mentioned, the outliers don't align well with any of the dimensions. Okay. So, that is how one could visualize text analytics. Of course, if we get four dimensions, it might, be, it might get a little, little harder. We might need some coloring and some different signs, but I think it's also possible. So, let's take a look at the time axis. We can see pretty well when the East Coast is waking up. We can also see when the game started, here. We see the halftime, we see when overtime started, I think it was only five minutes and then the Patriots won. And we see when the East Coast woke up again after the Super Bowl night. So how does that align with the topics? The red line are documents that don't align with any of the topics. The green line is the Patriots comeback. We see that from a timing perspective that it is perfectly related to the win and over time we see for Lady Gaga there's a spike at halftime of course and the Tom Brady jersey only a few tweets about that and they start after the game so that is one that is how one could tell the story of the Super Bowl pretty simple any questions on that <coughs> 